OPTFDTD can be used to simulate the transmission of optical signals through plasmonic arrays. In the following example, a simulation is run to characterize the effective hole shape of a nano hole array on the transmittance. In particular, the orientation angle and the ratio of the side lengths are tested. The problem to be simulated is an infinite sheet of gold backed by a substrate. In the gold sheet, there are air holes cut out, forming a nano hole array. Since this object is periodic, the simulation domain can be reduced to a unit cell so that the computation time can be drastically reduced. The unit cell shown is sufficient to represent the infinite nano hole array. Here, the pink colored object represents the gold film, the brown thin rectangle represents the air hole, and the blue backing represents the dielectric cladding. Sending a Gaussian modulated time signal from the input plane, shown here in red with an arrow pointing in a direction of propagation, allows for the calculation of the spectral response centered at the wavelength of the input plane. The dependence on the unequal scaling factor, theta, is simulated by multiple iterations ranging from 10 to 55 degrees, 45 degrees corresponding to a square. In addition to the different rectangular shapes, different orientations phi are simulated as well, ranging from 0 to 90 degrees. In the case where the air hole is square, 0 to 45 degrees are simulated instead. The simulation has been set up to run for multiple iterations, so we can just hit the run button and wait for it to finish. After the simulation is complete, the transmitted signal's spectral response is plotted for different unequal scaling factors. It can be seen that in general, there are two transmission peaks. The larger wavelength transmission peak can be tuned to larger wavelengths further by increasing the aspect ratio. Here green is the thinnest rectangle and black is the square air hole. These two cases of a rectangular and square air hole can be examined more closely. If the orientation of the rectangle is changed, the general trend is that the transmission decreases. This is expected since the tangential field at a conductor interface must be zero. Since the input light is y-polarized, as the rectangle orients itself parallel to the input light, the transmission drops. For the case of a square unit cell, it is seen that there is a much smaller effect on the transmission spectrum. This is expected since the square is symmetric. Two main conclusions can be drawn from these results. One, that the unit cell dimensions can tune the secondary transmission peaks, and two, the rotational angle can drastically affect the spectral response for rectangular unit cells. That's all for this short video, but if you would like to read more, you can find the paper and form link in the description below.